For the moment, Gunnison Island offers pelicans the perfect refuge. But this might not always be the case. Scientists have noted that since the 1990s, the level of the lake has been diminishing regularly. Some of them fear that the trend, partially attributable to global warming, will only intensify in the future. One day, it may very well be possible for predators to reach the pelican sanctuary. To understand what the future holds, sometimes we need to look to the past. One hundred and fifty kilometers west of the lake lies a vast plain of salt. It is one of the flattest zones on Earth and the ideal place for heading back in time to the origins of the Great Salt Lake. Here we are, Genevieve. Sunrise on Great Salt Lake. Well, it isn't really Great Salt Lake. We're at the Bonneville Salt Flats. It's the climate change of hot and dry versus wet and cool that makes this place just be a total contrast. This place was once an immense expanse of so water. Lake Bonneville, the precursor the of the Great Salt Lake. So we'll start with this one, and then we'll see if he's... 30,000 years ago, climate changed globally and we went into a colder, wetter environment here in North America. It only took probably, you know, fewer than a hundred years for it to go from Salt Lake to Wendover. This is big changes. It was a large lake about the size of Lake Superior, and that lasted for about 20,000 years. At its highest level, Lake Bonneville covered nearly two-thirds of Utah. This gigantic reservoir contained a hundred times more water than the current lake, until a cataclysm took place. We had this failure that everybody's enamored of, I am too. It's called the Bonneville Flood, and it's outpouring. This was this whole lake dropped 300 feet in less than a year. The natural barrier retaining the water in the north part of the lake abruptly gave way. Either there was an earthquake or a landslide or any number of things happened and it failed. And once it failed, just like butter, just went right through it. It equals all of today's rivers combined. The Ganges, the Amazon, Mississippi. With all the water that drained out, the level of the lake radically diminished, leaving traces on the landscape that can still be seen today. Next, the climate began to warm up, and the enormous Lake Bonneville gradually evaporated, slowly changing into a desert of salt. Today, the only remnant of this former inland sea is the Great Salt Lake. On a smaller scale, the fluctuations in water level have continued. From one year to the next, from one season to another, the lake level varies. This is easy to see when you compare two photos taken two decades apart. So this image is from the 1960s, this image from the 1980s. What do you want to do first? I'd like to go to Antelope Island. Antelope Island is here. Notice that it isn't an island. In my picture, Farmington Bay is huge. Stansbury, not an island. How about on yours? Yeah, mine's an island. Aren't you special? <laughs> I want to do Bear River Bird Refuge. Uh, no water. Empty. It does. It, and then you say, oh, Barely 20 years separate the these two pictures, yet the difference is blatant. That makes the lake islands water. become peninsulas, then so return to being islands once more. Uh, yeah, I do love it. In this flat, shallow lake, the slightest shift in water level changes the shape of the shoreline, causes floods, or dries up entire habitats. 
The lower the water level, the higher the salinity. Each fluctuation of the Great Salt Lake has immediate consequences. 